All right, so I've just built a stock market app, and the app um, goes and gets data from Yahoo Finance, and it shows the current Google stock price. So right now, I've, you know, what I've built is this kind of convenience app for, you know, Google stock, and I could use, I could could put anything in here for Google, right? I could change this to IBM, and you know, basically it would be an IBM con convenience app. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it so um, we can get any, the user can get any stock. So I'm going to go back to the component designer, and I'm just going to say um, change this to just stock price. Okay, because we're going to be able to do any stock price, and then I'm going to add a text box. Okay, and oh, sorry, I grabbed a password text box. I don't want that. I'm going to grab a just regular text box, okay, and I'm going to put a hint in here. The hint is what kind of the instructions for the user. So I'm going to put a stock symbol. Please enter a stock symbol. Okay, and notice it kind of shows up in 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 this. And then you know I guess I'll put the stock price heading right there. So you know what the user will be able to do is enter the stock like GOG and then it will show me that stock here okay so that's that's all I'm going to do as far as changing the the user interface okay we no longer want this screen initialize okay so we're not going to use screen initialize so I'm just going to get rid of it I'm going to keep um, our code within it okay and um, our got text is going to be the same, so we're still going to go get a stock, but what's going to happen is we're going to do it on a button click, and we're not always going to go to Goog. Okay, so you know what I want is I want to react to um, a button being clicked, and I guess you know one thing I'm missing here is I need some way for the user to to make things happen. So I'm going to say I'm going to add a button. Okay, and this is going to just be the text. I'll just say get uh, price. Okay, and I'll call this the get price button. Okay, so the user will type something in, they'll click get price, and it should show them the, the price. And I want to I want to make sure the, um, the text box here is renamed. I'm going to call it the symbol text box because that's where the user will type in the stock symbol. Okay, So back in the editor, now I've got my button, which I had failed to put in before. And I'm going to say get price button dot click. Okay. And that's where I come on to initiate this call to the web. Okay, Right now, if I click this button, it would get me Google's stock price because Google is kind of fixed in here and you know if I come over here it really doesn't matter I could type in anything here and it's gonna get me Google stock price okay so obviously I need to change this and I need to get rid of the specific part now I'm gonna build this URL up and the way you build URLs or kinda of any text is with the make text block so the URL I go access it's definitely going to look something like our original, but I'm going to get rid of this Goog. And notice it's S equals Goog here. So I'm going to get rid of just the specific part. Okay. And the way URLs work is the question mark says, you know what, there's some parameters coming. And parameters is kind of the information about which kind of information or page you want. Uh, this F kind of says, you know, what what's the actual format of the data I want? You know, how do how do I want it formatted? And um, this E is kind of the type. In this case I want a CSV file. And then the third parameter. So the ampersand split the parameters. They kind of separate the parameters. The third parameter is the stock symbol. And it's just ampersand S equals. So whatever we put after that, that's the stock we're gonna we're gonna get. Now we don't want to get Goog, what we want to get is whatever the users typed in this text box. Okay, and that text box we call the symbol text box. 
Uh, so I'm going to go get its text property because that is what the user has typed. If I type in IBM here, symbol textbox.txt will be IBM. Okay. And then I'm going to come back over here. I might as well just try this. If I type in um, IBM, get the price, and it shows me 191.4. If I go back and type in Goog, get the price, it gives me the Google price. So now I've got a little more flexible an app. I can kind of, you know, if I, if I know the symbol, I can, I can type the symbol in and it will tell me the current price for that stock. Pretty, pretty cool little app.